Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel Tutor Things. Today in this video, we are going to see the solid principles of object-oriented programming in C Sharp. So, I hope the whoever working on C Sharp may have already known these principles. In this video, we are going to explain in a, a clear way like uh, what is that and how it is used and uh, what are the advantages of using it. So everything in detail, we are going to explain this. So let's get started. Basically, solid principles are the certain set of rules we called as. Like by following those rules, what we can do is we can improve the design and maintainability of a your applications or projects or softwares which you are going to create in your uh, development of any website like this. So these are the principles was first introduced in early 2000s. So from then we are using these for the best practice as a developer like who are working with object oriented programming they should follow these particular kind of principles so these are actually relevant to like agile development like they will create like flexible and uh, what you can call a scalable and uh, very easy to modify the code and easy to test so it will give a good standard of uh, codes by following this set of principles so often these asked in these questions like what is solid principles should be asked in any of the interviews because employers often look for the candidates who have a strong understanding of these solid principles because if anyone who knows these principles and following these principles in while coding they will able to create a, a good term of like long term sustainability applications and reduces the cost of the application and improve the long time sustainability of the applications so by following these principles we can create a uh, very scalable code and scalable applications okay so this is widely popular in programming language mainly with object oriented programming language we should follow these particular principles to create a very good applications so let's get started so basically solid is the full form or acronym of these five things like we called as a five principles so s stands for single responsibility principle and o stands for open closed principle and l stands for liquid substitution principle and i stands for interface segregation principle and d stands for dependency inversion principle so let's see each and everything with the very detailed concepts so let's see the first one they called as a single responsibility principle so if a martin c La, sorry robert c martin told us in a single statement like what is single responsibility principle means a class should only have a single responsibility as it the name suggests the same thing in its definition also a class should have only a single responsibility that is only changes to one part of the software its specification should be able to affect the specification of the class so whatever you are changing that should affect that only that should not affect the other thing so that can be happen only when you are having the single responsibility thing like if that class should uh, responsible for that particular responsibility only so by following this you can see the diagram so that you can understand it in a better way see search list start there search list for passed elements so you are passing that you are searching that particular element and in that we should have such list means such list is should be happen there we should not include the other elements like copy passed element split list at element reverse the list so everything should not combine that we should have a separate for a separate thing so searching we should have one for copying we should have second one and for splitting the list we should have second other one and for reversing the list of elements we should have another one for having like separate separate one it will be look in a clear way and if you have any changes you can easily modify those things and you can easily uh, check for errors and everything so it should have a single responsibility class should have a single responsibility so srp means single responsibility principle which is nothing but splitting a non-srp class so a non-srp class means which is not a single responsibility here you can see here you can see this is search this is a class which are having so many responsibilities is a non-SRP class. What we are doing to maintain single responsibility class, we are splitting that into individual classes to for this particular responsibility only. So like this, we can achieve single responsibility principle. Okay, you understood, right? So basic definition stands for 
like SAP means it states that each class or module or a function in a program should do only one job that should be up to only for that particular one job in other words what we can say is he should have full responsibility for the single functionality of the principal so whatever the single functionality we should have all the related or responsible kind of thing into a single set or single package the class should contain only variables and methods relevant to that its functionality itself we should not add the other functionality for example if you have an employee class we should have the things like employee details and those things only should have we should not include the student details or all, everything in that or other hr or uh, higher authority members we should not add into that employee class we should limit it to that only employee details only in that class so that is that much single responsibility principle a class should have only one reason to change so that is the reason we want to change a single functionality class so this will achieve basically or the encapsulation which is an object oriented programming concept because it is easy to hide data from the user when all data methods for a job are within the same responsibility class so that will help you to achieve encapsulation let's see this with an example so that you can understand so implementation of re single responsibility principle we can see like uh, without srp and with srp so that you will understand better the implementation of it so see it doesn't follow srp here you can see here uh, we are having like uh, one class which is a register service you can see here register user is there which is not following srp like they are doing three different types of job registering a user and connecting to the database you can see here sql connection is open here connecting to the database and sending a mail these three jobs are done by this particular class only so here it is not following srp single responsibility principle is failing here so this type of class would create a confusion when it is in a larger projects like it is not unexpected to have an email generation in the same class which is having a registration so in the registration we should not have a email generation for these kind of things we should have a separate set of code right so there are so many things that would cause this code to change like uh, if there is any change in database connection which you have to change or we in mail sending format if you want to change anything you should have to change so like this if you have any modification we have to change this entire class and we have to again retest the entire class so that will consume time and every effort and then testing issue it will take time so this is all everything is a issue at the end of the day so instead of this what we can do is we need to split the class into three specific classes that each could accomplish a single job so that is how the same class would be like like uh, other factors to be sub separated individually like see here register class is there here we are registering that at a uh, user and then what you are doing is we are calling another class we are just using another class like for insertion whatever the uh, database creation and for sending an email we should have another this will achieve the srp that is nothing but single responsibility principle so this is because we only register a user so only for one reason it will change if it is a more user names restrictions are added so other behavior is maintained in the program that is now achieved with the calls so whatever the calls we are achieving that user repository call by using this repository we are calling insert call and there in that functionality we will have the insert code and then other send method we should have the email sending uh, code and everything so like this we can split the uh, codes like we have to combine and have it as a single responsibility like we should have only related functions or methods in a one class we should not add everything into a class that makes it look clumsy and also it will affect your performance of your application so this is called single responsibility principle and then we have one more thing called as a open closed principle o stands for open closed principle here that is nothing but software entities should be open for extension and closed for modification so any any class what you are creating should be open for extension like you can see the diagram so that you can understand so now you are having a old class with an existing code so old features are there in the old class now if you want to add new features you can just add the new feature for the new class so that you know, your old class is not affecting here so that is the good way so that is nothing but we are extending the extending the old class into a new class but not we are modifying the old class so you can see here the other diagram here old class is there 
so now in this class itself we are adding the new features that is not a good way here what you are doing is you are doing modifications so you should not do modification your class should be closed for modification so if you are doing adding the new features and everything in the old class itself so you have to again retest the old features and everything uh, when you are when you are going to test with the new features so modifying the old class instead of extension is called open closure principle so any class which you are having you should be open for extension but closed for modifications so this is called open closure principle let's see that in a statement form so in statement at first it seems like contradiction like we are setting telling like open and then close it it's like contrasting right since it has you as a program entities program entities come as class even class or function or module everything comes under as a program entity should be both are open and close it so that should be open and also close it for what open for extension close it for modification so see uh, open principle calls for entities that should be widely adopted but also remains unchanged this leads us to create duplicate entities with specified behavior through polymorphism so if you want to uh, like polymorphism kind of concept will come because we are extending our parent entity to suit the needs of the child entity while leaving the parent intact so we are not changing the parent entity class but we are creating a child like we are uh, what we called as we are uh, extending that particular old class into a new class and adding the new features out of it here parent class will serve as an abstract base class and that can be reused with the added specifications through the inheritance so oops concept will take place to for, uh, to achieve this particular kind of principle like open closure principle so this can work in a unique derived class that will confidently make changes in this new application that will not affect the parent or derived class okay so this is how uh, closed and open principle work if you see the implementation in, with an example so that you can clearly understand so this is purely depends upon polymorphism and abstraction of the code behavior based upon the class level rather than hard coding or certain situations let us see this example so that you will understand here you will have a code like doesn't follow ocp like uh, it's not following the open closer principle like see how it will be if it is not following you will have an area uh, function will be there which are having some functionalities so you are checking for the shape if shape is a rectangle and if it's uh, if rectangle you should follow this otherwise you should follow like circle kind of thing so you will having only two features in this area function so whatever the class which are having is we have to calculate the uh, area wow. area calculator so area calculator we are having one constructed uh, one uh, method there area where you are passing the shapes as an array so now you can see uh, we are iterating that shapes and uh, checking the width of that so and then we are finally getting area so for these shapes what we are doing is we are again referring this particular area object so see here whatever the shape if you want to add circle again we have to change this function every time so it will be risky right how many shapes you are going to add in here like if it is a rectangle or if it is a circle you are going to add like this that will be risky right so this is not uh, this is comes under like modification but one class should not be like should not be open for modification should be closed for modification so that can be improvised by like this like you should uh, you should have an abstract class there understood right so area should not be open for extension it can only handle rectangle and square shape if you want to add like triangle it is uh, like modifying it will be it's, it's not like closed for modification so if you want to achieve ocp by adding you can do like abstract class like shape abstract class we can add and we can have all the types of shapes inherited like you can have a rectangle you can inherit the shape so which is having an area function abstract we know right we should have only the uh, uh, definition but not the implementation so definitions will be there in the abstract class so whatever you want to implement you can implement in your uh, child class here you can see uh i have written statement with the width into height like whatever the formula based upon the width and height we can calculate for rectangle and we can have a circuit class which inherits the shape shape class uh, what is our abstract class so you can have your own uh, uh what we called as a implementation there radius like circle radius will be r square right pi r square so like that you can have
so like you can see if you want to add triangle also you can simply do you can have a public class triangle you can uh, inherit that shape abstract class so that you can add one more uh, functionality there so every time this area class will be override with the uh, whatever the class which you have inherited so ultimately when you are uh, iterating from your shapes you can get an area from uh, whatever the thing which you want if the shape is of which type you can go with that so that will be overridden here so ultimately you are getting area out of that so now you understood right so e now each subtype of shape handles with its own area of calculation through polymorphism this opens for sh shape class extension because a new shape can be easily created by adding its own area calculation without any errors previously you can see so it is having like clumsy and if you are if you are adding only a rectangle you should modify this class itself so here this function you have to modify now if with the open closed principle what you can do is you can extension so you can add extension for triangle you can take shape uh, abstract class and you can extension that at triangle so that you can call that also so this is the how you can uh, uh, you can have extension for a class but not modification as a result, program now achieves the object closed principle. So next one we have is liquid substitution principle. So what this liquid substitution principle will do means, uh, like So, liquid substitution principle is nothing but like uh, objects in a program should be replaceable with instances of their subtypes without altering the correctness of the program. So, here you can see if you have a class A, so if you have a class A and you are having like uh, some class B and class C, so if you're having substitution like seamless substitution for class B in existing class code. If you have having any extension like uh, no need of unnecessary things like whatever in the A like if you have extension in B it should be like substitution for that. So previously you have seen right in this example for example if you have a area here in the shape you are having an area so area abstract uh, definition will be there so that should be overridden here so that is nothing but uh, uh, substitution principle so whatever is in the parent class. So object in a program should be replaceable with the instances of the subtypes without altering the correctness of the program. So whatever the definitions which are having in the parent class should have the implementation in the base class that should be mandatory. We should not skip that uh, like like uh, you, if you forgot that particular thing it will create an error. So it is a better to create like create a substitution for everything which is defined in the uh, parent class you understood right. So A and B is a subclass and then C. Seamless substitution for the class B class for the B class in the existing code. So that is nothing but LSP we called as. So LSP is the specific definition of a subtyping related to the created by uh, this particular um, person which you have created. So the name of the person is this. And the principle says that any class must be directly replaceable by any of its subclasses without error as i said right so whatever the things which you have defined there that should be comes in the like whatever the extension which you have like parent uh, from the parent you will have a child class right so in that child class you should define that particular thing you should not skip that whatever you are having so uh, you understood right E subclass should maintain all the behavior from the base class along with its any new behaviors. Okay, unique to the subclass. So it should have the already defined parent class and then if you have a new behaviors then it will be okay. So here uh, you can see the example which is not following this LSP principle. So see class is the program we have and main method is there. There we are creating um, Apple variable which is of... Uh, orange orange class so with the base class of uh, this is apple the derived class is orange so that you are creating your object like this so you are creating you are calling method called as get color 
you can see this get color is in this method base class method also and object class method also so you have defined that thing here also so it is not recommended to define here so if you have defined uh, there that should be overridden right just that should be overridden by the orange class so when you are having the apple with a new orange so your output will be like orange orange will be the output so here you are getting confusion right which uh, which uh, thing is overriding which thing like uh, it's not following lsq substitution for example if you have adding another another class uh, like you are having one more uh, definition so you you are not implementing that in the orange class so then that will that will directly take that a base class definition itself right so then it is not specific to this orange class then this particular lewis substitution principle will not work so see how you are achieving that by using a uh, lewis substitution principle this can be achieved by using lsp so see this particular example yeah because orange class doesn't replace the apple class without altering the program of the output is overridden by orange class and therefore we put written an apple as a that an apple is orange so this can be ordered by having an abstract class here so yeah abstract class is just de defining that and we are implementing that in the uh, child class here you can see abstract class is fruit we have which is having just definition and public class apple fruit so we are overriding the whatever the definition which have red color based upon apple that should return a red based upon orange that will give the color as orange so whenever you are creating an object for fruit so with new orange orange class then you can get color you will get an orange whenever you are creating get color with an apple uh, instance you will get an red red color as an output so here you are, you are achieving that uh, lsp so like this we have to do to change we should we should add an abstract class for fruit for both apple and orange that will implement here you can see column that will implementing this so here uh, no need of having the virtual and then these things and everything. you should have an abstract so that will be not visible to the end user so implementation will be hidden this will give you encapsulation for example it is a oops concept encapsulation encapsulation will be achieved by using this lsp so any type that may be apple or orange of a uh, fruit class can be replaced with other subtype or other subtypes without errors so for this specific class behavior get color as a result this program is achieving lsp so there is no confusion right so that will be clear like if you are calling this button this will come so instead of here if you haven't used an uh, virtual or override kind of things that will give or uh, as a red red as a result for this orange class so to to maintain this we have to check virtual keyword is there or not and what is happening everything some error or confusion will be there so if you follow these kind of abstraction kind of thing by using abstract class and just defining there and then having implementation for that by adding extension to that class so this will achieve ls lsp so this is called a, a lewis substitution principle and the final um, next one is interface aggregation i stands for interface aggregation in solid principles so the definition in integration segregation itself says that we are segregating the interfaces based upon the functionalities so many many client specific interfaces are better than one general purpose interface so if you having like client said like uh, to have everything this information should be there we have given some specifications to you instead of going into a single interface you can have to split like a uh, how we are splitting the classes based upon single responsibility principle like the same we have to segregate the interfaces also so it is better to have a single single interfaces for the single responsibilities for example here you can see list is there for searching kind of thing so that can be two list like a uh, integer list and then word list in integer list you can search and the um, uh for word list you can have like get first letter get word all the word related kind of thing you can have there and integer kind of related thing you can have it in a other kind other implementation list is same so whatever for integer and for uh, words you should list operations will be same so you are just segregating that uh, two things like only inheriting applicable methods only 
like whatever the applicable at that time you can inherit that itself and you can do the operation instead of having all the unnecessary things in one place you can have only the necessary kind of things here you can see in the second in the second uh, diagram here list is there which are having like get first letter get word count and search so here they are uh, not seeing like that is that an integer list or a word list they are performing entire things in a single entity like single interface so this is not recommended to use so only you can inherit based upon the applicable methods if you want uh, integer list you can you can only inherit that list for these functionalities likewise only so many client specific interface are better than having a one general interface so this is how uh, integration segregation defines the statement for this is it requires the classes only be able to perform behaviors that are useful to achieve its end functionalities so only the required things we can have it in a interface in other words classes doesn't include behaviors they don't want to use so they don't want to use the behaviors they don't need to include that in the interface this led to our first solid principle in the together as i said right so classes should have only a single responsibility like all variables and methods which are related to one behavior should have at one place and other things should have at the other place like method should contribute to the end goal of their entirely like so by this we can have this uh, same in the case of interfaces so it is called as interface segregation principle so by using this what we can achieve is we can debug easier and we can have uh, uh, like uh, with less code we between the classes and less code means fewer bugs ultimately so next uh, single method is responsible for uh, smaller variety of behaviors like th there is a problem with single behavior no need to look over the uh, big functionalities so it will have like uh, some smaller parts of code so it will be easy for you to understand that also so here you can see uh, with an example if you see you can understand it better which is a not following se integration segregation principle we call it as isp so here see we are having a i worker class uh, we are having a i worker class here so what this i worker class is doing is uh, having some properties which are having like id mail email monthly salary other benefits hourly rates hour in months and calculate net, net salary calculate worker salary so now we are inheriting this i worker interface for full time employees and for contract employees for full 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 time employees all having all the whatever the uh, properties which are having we have all the properties for that uh, employee class also full time employee class and for contract also we have the same but the calculation of net salary will differ so here you can see calculate of net salary is not need for co contract employees they need only the worker salaries so they need no need have to calculate net salary so we are not defining that method but it is present in the abstract class so we should define we should define that uh, as we learn that in the lewis substitution principle right so whatever there in the uh, abstract class we should define that but we no need of that so what they are doing is throw new uh, some exception they are throwing but it is not recommended to throw an error right so you should remove that class whenever it is not required why need to throw an error so this is the problem which we have without isp so with using isp like interface segregation principle this problem will be lost so here you can see in the full time employee here also they need only the net salary but they don't need to to have the worker salary so for that plus they are throwing error like new exception not implementation ex exception error so instead of that what we can do is we can implement isp like interface segregation principle by this what we can have is we can have a base class for the basic information like id name mail and for uh, for a full time employee we can have one more interface like interface segregation we are segregating the interfaces so we are segregating the interfaces we have total interface only one interface as i worker we are segregating it into a different different interfaces so you having i full time worker salary which is inheriting from i base class which are having these properties also along with these property new features so next we are having one more interface for i contract worker salary which is interfacing uh, implementing i base class which are having some more some more properties like what uh, contract rates in the base of hours right hourly rate hour in method calculate worker salary those things coming into full time we'll have like monthly salary other benefits and salary net net salary they are calculating so like this we are segregating the interfaces 
Now, if we want to implement by using the class like derived class, so full time employee class from the uh, from the interface, I full time salary. So they are having like uh, these uh, these things which are coming from base class, and then they have these monthly salaries, other benefits, and then we have this method like calculate net salary, and then we are calculating these things only. We are adding just the monthly salary plus other benefits. We will get an S salary for the full time employee. For contract, it will be fixed like. Uh, like same i base class will be their id name email and uh, based upon our hourly rate hourly rate and hourly in month and here no need of net salary we have just a uh, calculate worker salary method only uh, we should define that here in the derived class like calculate chain class so calculate worker salary uh, based upon hourly rate and hours in month so like this interface segregation will happen like i hope you have understood right so instead of having one interface for all the properties and when you are implementing that we are just implementing the required things and throwing an error this is not recommended to have it so uh, instead of that what we can do is we can have a segregation like interface segregation isp we can di divide that uh, interfaces and we can inherit the required things and remove the unnecessary kind of things and we can just implement those things only in the uh, derived classes and we can implement that uh, definition so this is all about interface segregation i hope you have understood right so next move on to the dependency inversion principle which is the last principle in solid principles d d stands for dependency inversion principle so this is nothing but one should depend upon abstractions but not on contradictions abstractions is nothing but abstractions is nothing but just definitions but not the uh, implementation contradictions means abstract and then concrete concrete means a uh, uh, definition will be there declaration and definition declaration it should depend and should not depend on definitions see dependency in injection uh, how it works with an example here first see the diagram so that you will understand so here you can see interface a is there object a and object b is there so if you have an object a and if you are creating object b so whatever you are changing in object B will affect object A directly. So instead of having direct interaction, you can have a loose coupling. Like based of object A should refer to the interface A. Ultimately, that interface A inherits by uh, using object B. So like this, we'll have an uh, indirect uh, relation between object A and object B. That is nothing but a loose coupling. So dependency inversion principle achieves loose coupling. Changes to the object A and B will not affect each other. So these are two independent kind of thing which are interrelated by using interface. So if you having direct relation inherits object A and object B, this is not recommended. This will cause an issue like whatever the changes which have done in the low level class will affect the high level class. So to avoid these kind of thing, we should have to use dependency inversion principle. One should depend upon the abstraction like interface is nothing but abstraction but should not concrete directly object A should not depend upon object B. So dependency inversion has two parts. As I said, high module mo models should not depend upon the low level modules. Instead, both should depend upon abstractions. As I said, this is a high level module and B is the low level module should not depend directly. It should depend via the interface. So depends upon abstractions. Abstraction should not depend upon details. Details like concrete implementation should depend upon abstractions like say as this is doesn't depend on that exactly the uh, low level class also should not depend directly on that it should have depend upon the interface itself so this should not depend on this this should not depend on that so this is called dependency inversion principle as you understood right the first part of the principle is reverse tradition of oops software design so a decoupling will happen here that is meant by loose coupling will be there so instead of uh, 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 tightly coupled, you will have loose coupling here. So if you see the implementation part, you that you so that you can understand. So here you can see general uh, business program with interface like low level and high level components I have created. Let's create an interface with get customer name. So you have an interface like uh, get customer name. Uh, one uh, method will be there. So that method is present in. Uh, uh, customer data access here I am creating some abstract for this particular class so this is the abstract interface so we have definition uh, declaration there and we have defining that in the uh, get data access uh, one class which is inheriting this interface 
extensing by using the interface and then we have a, a one more uh, kind of thing which is called data access factory so the actually this uh, data access factory is uh, we call it as a registering that particular uh, interface to that particular class like connecting those interface and class so i customer data class is referring to the customer data class just we can call us like uh, in dot net if you see this called as a uh, registering a service like uh, by using singleton or transshape we are creating that instance basically so if you having this uh, data factory this static method you need to create object for this it will directly call so it will create you this uh, uh, data access uh, uh, it will call this class so ultimately we will get a uh, um, abstract definition for this and next we are having a business logic what we are doing in that business logic is we are just creating the on object here you can see high level high level class here is a customer basic logic is the high level class so there we are uh, calling the interface i customer data interface we are creating an object for that and constructor dependency injection can be done by using a constructor so this is called constructor dependency injection so constructor is there here public the same class name uh, will be there as a method name and then in that we are uh, assigning that object which we have created uh, for that uh, we are calling this uh, uh i custom get customer data access object here you can see we are creating this uh, what we called as instance by using this constructor by using dependency injection uh, inversion so public string get customer int and return get customer id so here how you are doing we are not directly creating object for uh, or uh, data access class directly we can do no need of having this much but you can directly create so to avoid a uh, like tight coupling if you have any uh, changes in that or creating uh, for example if you understand better uh, don't see this example i will explain you for example if you are having a uh, employee like a student class so if that student interface we are having and we are having some uh physics student or math student like other students which are having shared services or record us so if you if you have moving logic from student to uh, other student one student to other student no need to uh, create new instance at everywhere you can just change at the uh, first registering part so that will uh, comes at every place so instead of changing at every place you can just change it here interface which you are uh, registering so for example if i am registering i customer data interface which are having this particular properties so you can change that properties right so in that interface only so that will reflect it everywhere so like this it will achieve a lo loose coupling here you can see customer business logic is the high level uh, class which is having dependency on data access interface this interface and through that interface we are having low level that is a get customer name Uh, get customer uh, sorry customer data access is the low level class is a detailed class so that is linked to that through the interface this is a high level class that is interface uh, linked to the interface and interface is linked to the low level class so for registering that particular interface to this particular class we should have a data access factory there where we are registering that class with this so this is how we can have a high level and low level which is depend upon abstractions so that is something in pro interfaces but not directly so this is called a dependency inversion principle i hope you have understood right if you have any doubts regarding this you can let me know in the comments so that we can clear your comments so these are the most uh, asked questions in any of the interviews if you are good at these things i hope you can clearly answer this question without any hesitation so next finally what we are going to see is what are the advantages of using this solid principles like by in uh, debugging or uh, designing and uh, building the softwares this can improve your maintainability like if you are creating a code that is easier to maintain and modify over time because all principle encourage you to creation of modular and flexible code which are less prone to errors and more resistant to the changes in the requirement as we are seen like single responsibility principle or interface segregation so it will create you a, a code which is a less prone to errors next uh, reduce the complexity as well. so it, it will reduce the complexity of software by promoting the use of abstraction 
and encapsulation and a single responsibility like it will breaking up the uh, responsibility functions into a single entities so that will easier to understand and to maintain and to reduce the complexity it will be uh, basic principles very good principles to reduce the complexity and we can have enhanced flexibilities so by this principle it will uh, encourage you to creation of flexible code that is open for extension and closed for modification that is ultimately encourages the flexibility without breaking the existing functionality right so we are not uh, changing the existing one and we can flexibly uh, create an extension for that and next increase the scalability by using these principles we can have increase or scale your applications as they encourage use of abstraction and decoupled dependencies like we are not directly depending upon the uh, high level classes like which can help you to prevent the code base from becoming overly complex and difficult to manage applications so to improve all these things like maintainability complexity reduction of complexity and flexibility increases and the uh, scalability increases we should follow solid principles while coding in the oops programming language or in oops programming maybe using c sharp or java like kind of things so this is called uh, all solid principles so after this solid principles you should learn about more about polymorphism abstraction inheritance and encapsulation so that you will you can easily understand these concept also if you have a clear understanding of those things so using of these things while programming is much important i hope you have understood this all uh, the things which i have explained in this video if you have a doubt regarding this feel free to comment in the comment section and let me know how you have feel like any suggestions for me to improve myself in expressing myself in the videos let me know in the comment section if you like this video give a big thumbs up below and that's all for this video thanks for watching bye bye